Good day, I'm Mike James, and this is Parkitect, and today, you've beat me down. Comments and comments, pings on forums and social media, emails. I can't believe how many people want me to explain how to make billboards or pictures for your billboards in park Tech. so okay I, I you you win I'll do it I really I really don't like um, trying to explain Photoshop I'm not sure why I think it's mostly because every time I explain one thing it creates four more questions and if you don't know Photoshop I'm gonna show you how to do it in Photoshop it's gonna move kind of quick but you can always pause the video step by step what I do, what I can't do is explain in extreme detail exactly why certain things work the way they work. I'm not going to go into how you work with layers and all the minutia of getting Photoshop to do what you want it to do. Hopefully, uh, you can either use uh, your version of Photoshop or maybe uh, another program, whether it be GIMP or something else similar that has a lot of similar features and you can kind of I don't know you know adapt it to work for you these are these are um, some very basic things but they're things that are very important and I'll be honest I don't know what other programs have some of the tools I'm using or what they call them but we're gonna run through this for you as always if you have any uh, any comments or questions leave them in the comments down below I'll be happy to try to answer any questions I can for you so hang on tight the billboard picture tutorial it's been months you've been asking for it it's coming right at you First start off with where are your billboard files well once you've installed the mod you want to go to your I'm assuming Windows your C Drive users the name of your user in my case it's Mike then you're gonna to go to documents I just upgraded to Windows 10 documents isn't a folder anymore it annoys me it is a folder but it doesn't look like one then you go to Parkitect and right in that folder you're gonna see a folder called banners that's where it is you have the long banners the square banners and the wide banners which is just basically uh, a uh, it looks like a, a 16 by 9 style it's uh, there is a small error in the wide banners uh, the wide banners the default one here is 500 by 200 it should be 400 by 200 make sure uh, that the other ones are fine but this one you want to when you make the pictures make it 400 by 200 if you make it 500 by 200 it's going to stretch it up and it's not going to look correct it'll look make it look stretched vertically and that's just something that uh when luke made the mod he just made that small error in the default picture and never fixed it so it's real easy to work around just uh if you're going to use that banner make sure you use a uh, 400 by 200 also keep your banners small you're not going to be looking at them close up or full screen most of the time and if you make them too big they do take up a lot of memory and it can cause instability in the game so first let's go here and let's just go ahead and pull this default banner in here and we're going to go ahead and we're going to change the size to 400 by 200 now i have to unlock the aspect ratio so there we are and that's just to have the file the size we want it so there it is that is the size that we need we're going to go ahead and uh, just add a layer and hide this original Parkitect logo layer that they had here first thing you need to do is you need to decide what you want your picture to be of we're going to do a pizza so let's go ahead and let's search for a slice of pizza
there you go. Now, when you're searching on Google, you go to images. And if you want to be completely legal, now, if you're using this for yourself, it doesn't matter. But if you're going to share it with people, you really want to use one that is labeled for reuse with modification. You don't have to, um, you know, if you're using it for your own personal use. But let's be fair. Now, you'll notice there are some pictures here that are already pretty parkitect -y. You know, they're very cartoony. I prefer to make my own. And you can scroll through here. There are just, you know, hundreds and hundreds of pictures of pizza and pizza related things. There's also things that have nothing to do with pizza. This guy in the sunglasses is doing it Gangnam style. I'm not sure what that is. And uh, there's a cherry pie. Uh, I'm not sure what Mickey and Minnie have to do with this. Uh, cheese. Well, I guess cheese. And what is this lady leaning for? Yeah, let's, let's go back up to the pizza. This is <laughs> this is going from bad to worse. So I'm going to pick this uh, third slice from the left. That's a good, that's a good looking slice. And the reason I'm selecting this one is it has a fairly white background. And what this will allow me to do is isolate the pizza slice itself fairly easily. Now, I am fairly experienced. I could, I can delete anything. I, you could put that in a background, a confetti, glitter, and a rainstorm, and I could get it out. But if you're not really experienced, go ahead and try to find something that has a fairly stock background that's very easy to work around now this one isn't perfect you know so it's not a perfect white background but it's it's something we can work around first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to just uh, erase manually these red corners um just just so i don't have to deal with them i could i could probably do it the other way um you know, using the magic select tool on the red and the white but this i just deleted it's easy enough they're in the corners just get rid of it and now the magic select tool here is that little wand, the fourth one down from the top. The tolerance, I'm gonna to put it as about probably 44 or 55. It really depends on exactly how much. Make sure you click contiguous so it doesn't start deleting white spots in the middle of your pizza. Hold shift when you select the next area. That way it adds it all together. And now you can just delete. Control D will get rid of those little marching ant selection tool. And now I'm gonna manually kind of get rid of some of these little pieces I can see that are still there that didn't get selected and it's just it's much easier to use the magic selection tool and then go back and clean it up later than it is to do this by hand i have done things by hand many many times it happens a lot when you're trying to uh when you're trying to do like someone's hair against a, a background it can be a real chore but this will get most of it and the rest of it that we might not notice right now because that little square background makes it hard to see some of the little pieces they'll stand out like a sore thumb pretty darn quickly when we get to an, another step a little later on and we'll fix them there. So there, now we have the pizza on a blank background. It is a, uh, I guess you want to call it a see-through background. Drag that layer down to the create new layer and it'll copy it. First thing we need to do is get it to look less like a picture. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go to, um, oh, well, this thing is huge. Let's, we're going to reduce the size. Uh, we, we definitely don't want to work with a really big size because you want to make it small enough so that in 400 by 300, it's a little bigger than we need, but it's small enough. The reason you don't want a real big picture is no matter how much of this modification you do, uh, when you shrink it down, it'll end up looking like a photograph again and won't look good in the Parkitect scenery. So we're going to go to Filter. Blur smart blur you can make almost anything look like a cartoon with smart blur look at that little preview window there now the radius is how far out it goes to figure out what it's going to make it the smaller the radius the more cartoony it looks in general the threshold is kind of how much it's going to do and the threshold and the radius kind of play with each other you have to play with it uh quality low is fine medium is fine high is fine whatever you like you see i play around with the threshold a little bit just trying to get it to look cartoony enough so i think that's good so we'll go ahead and we'll use that looks like a cartoon doesn't it now there is a problem it uh looks like a very bland washed out now you might be thinking that doesn't look like a piece of pizza anymore now it just looks like blobs of color well that's true but we're going to do some stuff first i'm going to copy this again 
so I have a copy of the cartoony version I'm going to go ahead and change my colors so that if you look here I'm going to choose a light color and then a dark color you can hit X or you can hit that little arrow and now I'm going to pick a darker color from the pizza and I'm going to darken that color up a little more I don't think it's quite dark enough and the reason I'm doing this is because the next tool we're going to use is a filter that uses the colors here and having the colors match your object will make it a little less jarring you can also just make it black and white it'll look like a uh, dark outline when you do so we go to artistic photocopy and there is what it does now you'll notice at the top you have the detail and darkness sliders you have to kind of adjust and play with this and get a feel for what's going to work for your picture do you want just a little bit do you want a lot i kind of like it here darkens the outside gives me a little definition on the pepperonis and the sauce and the cheese and then you double click on that layer and you're going to go ahead and either click darken or um, multiply or whatever you want oh i forgot to turn on the uh, layer below it so it was just disappearing so this these, this top section here is what you want to use darken is what i generally use if you don't like some of the color changes that darken causes you can go to color uh, color burn multiply will actually bring out more of the similar colors because we use the similar colors just choose one of those ones up at the top all of them work and they all give a slightly different effect you notice here just zooming out so you can see what's going to look like on a sign when it's a little smaller so now that's what it looks like without that overlay so what we're going to do is we're going to adjust this picture because i wasn't getting enough red I'm going to go into levels here and if you don't know what levels are it's a way of doing the brightness contrast and um white balance and everything all at once well maybe not the white balance but the brightness the contrast something a little bit of the saturation it allows you to show where you want the uh the, the light to be and it basically we're shrinking the color space here which is great because it's a cartoon and you notice by doing this i brought out the reds in the pepperonis made it look a little better uh, if you don't know what levels are go into it. it's control l or just go up there uh, and you can adjust it yourself and play with it you can always undo it now what i'm doing is i i made it made a mistake here this is what you don't want to do you don't want to flatten the layers because if you flatten the layers you're going to lose your transparency so you just want to merge the visible layers that's your cartoon layer and that overlay we made so now Here's my piece of pizza ready to go on my sign. Oh, I forgot. We, we want to put an outer glow. Now, outer glow is great because it just outlines your object. And because we're making this more of a cartoony thing, that's what we want to do. You want your opacity, opacity at 100%. Your spread should be at 100% because we don't want it fading off. The size is what controls the thickness of the line. And we just want a little bit. We don't want a whole lot. And you'll notice all these dots here are what we missed before because one pixel will have that big rim around it. I told you it'd be easy to get rid of them. And this is a spot. So just pick up your eraser tool and just erase around those and get rid of all those spare little uh, straggly bits that you didn't notice before. But you notice this having this uh, this brown around the pizza will kind of help it stand out and make it look less like a photograph. And I know it doesn't look like a super detailed picture of a pizza, but it's not supposed to. Once you're, you know, putting this on a sign and it's small and it's in your park, believe me, you'll know exactly what that is. We chose a picture that looks like a piece of pizza. You're going to notice. So what we'll do is we will rasterize the layer style and what we do is we right click on the layer and click rasterize what that does is it makes it so when i copy this image rasterizing puts that outline as part of the actual picture and not a filter over the top of it it also allows you if you notice i can put another outline around the new picture which already has the brown and this is a great trick if you want to go ahead and have multiple watch i'll rasterize again 
Now that red, red line around it is part of the picture. And I can add another outer glow that'll go outside of the new picture. And this is a great way to have something have multiple colors to have it stand out. Works really well for text. You can use it for your pizza sign. But we don't need that. We just need the brown. So I'll control alt Z a couple times to bring us back to where we were. That's the undo function in Photoshop. And I'll just uh, control A, control C to copy it. And we'll move this over to our sign. Control V to paste. There we go. And now control T is, you can also get there by going uh, image transform, but control T will allow you to scale and rotate this image you just placed in there without affecting the other layers. It's just going to impact the pizza. Now you notice here, if I hold shift, it'll keep the aspect ratio so the pizza doesn't get all squished up or stretched out. If you don't hold shift, see if I hold shift, see how it keeps it square. If you don't hold shift, you have to kind of guesstimate and make it look right. Just, just hold shift. It makes it a lot easier. And if you put your mouse just a little bit above one of the corners, you'll get that little curl and you just hold the mouse and you can rotate your pizza. Looks great. And you can still go back and hold shift and resize it. So that's perfect. That's going to look really great on a sign. I mean, that is going to look just awesome on a sign. I'm, I, I want a pizza now. Gosh darn it. <laughs> pizza is the perfect food. All four food groups, breads, milk and cheese, meat, and vegetables. And yes, tomato is a vegetable. So now we're going to have to put some, some kind of sign on the sign, maybe pizza or pizza slices. One of the things uh, when you're making your signs, when you put your text down, Photoshop is going to automatically assign space between each line. Now, right here, I need to get it off of the, uh, the white. That's a little annoying. You can't read it. But Photoshop is automatically going to assign space between your first line and your second line. So make each line independent of the other. So if I want to say pizza, slices don't just type in pizza enter slices because now there's going to be a pretty big space in between the two words it won't look good for the sign and there's no way for you to manually adjust it because they're kind of tied together like they're on one piece of paper are you keeping up this is uh this is pretty simple now here's the uh here's the next word now on this one I'm going to actually have to uh, reduce the size of it a little bit. Initially, you know, I, I have it this same size, but it is just a little bit too big and I just didn't really like it. So I'll highlight it and then shrink it down. So that looks really good. Let's get our move tool and we'll put slices under the word pizza. We'll select the pizza, pull it up a little bit. Now, once you get this done, you can then merge the two together so that you can edit them and add layers and out outlines to them all at once. But when you're initially setting them up how you want them to look together, you want them to be separate. Now I decided I wanted to move the pizza slice over here, but if I rotate it, now my pizza slice is upside down. You can tell it's upside down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the transform image. No, no. Edit transform and flip horizontal free transform is that control t we were using but now i can just do flip horizontal now the pizza slice is going the other way and it doesn't look like it's upside down much better so what we're going to do next is we're going to do our text and have it you can see the text is kind of fading out so i'm going to select the uh, both layers right click and rasterize them both because they're currently text and I, you can't merge them. And then I'll right click again and merge layers. Now that, sli that uh, layer, that slice, wow, I am hungry, is now all together. We're gonna again use the outer glow 
And this time we're going to do a couple outer glows because just like we showed you in the other thing, you can do it, rasterize it, and then put a new one on top. And I'm going to use that to make my text look like the colors we were using on the building. Is it too much? Maybe, but that's kind of the way marketing works. You know, when you have enough marketing, when you're done. Now, I did it and got the numbers and everything the way I wanted them while it was green. Now I'm going to make it white because you can't really see the white, but I know the numbers are okay. So I'm going to click OK, rasterize. Again, rasterize the layer style. Come on, Mike, up a little. You can do it. There it is. And now I'm going to add, and now you see the white around the pizza. Uh, now I'm going to go ahead and make another outer glow. And this time, I'm going to make it the green. So I have red, white, and green, just like the building. And I think that looks great. Now, of course, you can make your signs any way you want. You could use a long sign. You could use a square sign. Whatever is going to work in your park. Keep in mind, when you are making these signs, about 5% of the outside, top, bottom, left, right, gets covered up by the fascia around the billboard sign. So always leave a little bit of space. Uh, my pizza crust there is going to get cut off a little bit. That's okay. It doesn't matter. It'll still look great. Don't forget, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. We've got a little more that I'm going to show you here. And uh, first, when you save it, save it as a PNG. And I always like to name mine you know, wide dash, whatever it is, long dash, whatever it is, square dash, whatever it is. That way, if I just save all my images somewhere, I know where they're going to go in the future. Now, that'll make a great looking sign. I think it'll look beautiful in your park. But let's say you wanted something a, just a little more, I don't want to say old fashioned looking, but something with a, a little more texture to it, a little more character to it. You've seen some of my signs and you can you can tell that it looks like the background isn't a plain background, but the background actually looks like it has a texture. It was painted on wood. And that's what we're going to do here. I'm going to go ahead and first I'm going to lower this white down a little bit because that bright white I'm using right now isn't very realistic and it does tend to blow out on the game. So let's go ahead and just lower this down to just, just a little bit of an off gray. You won't even notice that in the park. You won't notice that that's not white, but it does help a little bit because you don't want that 100% stark white everywhere. It just, it kind of overwhelms. But let's say this was a, uh, a wooden sign. It was hand painted on a wooden sign, like you've seen uh, not so much in theme parks as much as maybe carnivals and fairs. So I'm going to paste in this wood texture I found here. It's just a picture of a wooden fence that I found on Google. And we're going to do a lot of what we did with some of our previous steps. Only in this one, what we're going to do is we're just going to use not the actual look of the wooden fence because it's been painted, but the texture of the wooden fence. So let's make sure black and white is selected. We'll go to filter, style, not style, I sketch, photo, photocopy, and then you can adjust the detail and the darkness right here before you click OK. I personally like um, less detail because we didn't we didn't go through the steps of making this like a cartoon. You can go through the steps of cartooning this and then doing this process. I think that would be a little bit overkill. You don't really need to do that here. I make mine just a little light and just enough so you could see something. So there it is. Now it's just the kind of texture of the planks. And what I'm going to do is, again, I'm going to use one of those top couple selections in the blending mode. Don't use the ones at the bottom. The ones at the bottom are going to change the colors. They're going to make things look weird. But darken and linear burn and color burn work really well. Right here is just, I'm just using darken. And you'll notice my white sign now has a texture to it. Now, one of the things about darken you'll notice in the slice of pizza, I don't know if your monitor can see this, but there are some streaks of like green in some of the places 
where the uh, the cracks in the wood are. I personally like that. It's like there's a little you know mildew or mold. If you don't like that, just use color burn instead. Uh, the effect isn't quite as strong, but it is uh, it gets rid of that that color offset. You can also just use linear burn. It is a stronger uh, stronger look than color burn, and you can always adjust the opacity to make it uh, the way you want it. But that looks now like your pizza slices sign was put on some boards and nailed up onto the wall of your building. So that's how you do it. Um, that's how you make a sign for your park. Again, don't make them too big. Make sure it's very readable from a long distance. And put it in the right directory. Really appreciate you watching the show. I hope you all appreciate this. You've been asking for it. Leave me a comment down below. Don't forget to subscribe. I really appreciate it. And until next time, I hope each and every one of you has a good one.